Hey guys, it is the Turtle Girl. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are taking a tour of my 29-gallon Diamondback Terrapin tank for my Turtle Hoku, but I just decided to film the intro outside because it was like really, really nice. I mean, you can see our rhododendrons. By the way, State Flower of Washington. They're looking really awesome. And also, it's pretty warm. I might actually take the turtles out to bask. So if I do do that, you guys will also be able to see that in this video. And also, okay, I know it's really off topic, but this is my Black Panther shirt. Avengers Infinity War was amazing. If you are a Marvel fan at all, you need to go watch it. Like seriously, like go watch it right now. Anyway, sorry, that was beside the point. Sorry for all you people who don't watch Marvel, but let's just get on with the video. So now we are looking at the 29 gallon aquarium. This is a standard glass aquarium. It is 30 inches wide by 12 inches deep by 18 inches tall. And this tank was actually given to me by our uncle. And actually it wasn't even given to me. It was for my sister's 10th birthday for her first aquarium, but she decided she didn't really want to have anything to do with it. So that's how it ended up with me. And so now we have Hoku in here. He is the star of our show today. Oops, sorry. You can also see the great algae we have on here. But anyways, here is Hoku, the Diamondback Terrapin. He is a Northern Diamondback Terrapin, so that is one of the subspecies. Um, scientific name, if you're into that, is Malachlamese Terrapin Terrapin. Like his name suggests, he comes from the Northeastern United States, and he's got some really gorgeous patterns, which you can't see because he's deciding to go up and bask. But I just love his speckled patterns. I just love his shell. He's just such an ornate turtle and not something you see every day. So that's why I really love his species. They're actually one of my favorites. And also you can see his tank mates in here. These are convict cichlids. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest. I don't know my fish scientific names as much as I know my turtle scientific names, but these are convict cichlids. And it was kind of sad because these were the only fish that could live with Hoku because he ate all the neon tetras and all the platys and all the other fish I had tried with him, even the danios and all those super fast fish. But because the cichlids are a little aggressive, they will actually hold their own against him. So they kind of don't bother each other. This female right here is looking really nice. You can see the orange on her belly. That's how I know she's a female. These are actually all females in here. And there used to be six females, but Hoku still can catch these guys. So now there are only three. But I mean, it's kind of what you have to deal with when you have turtles and fish in the same tank. They don't always cohabitate very well. And you just have to accept it because some turtles, it's just their instinct to go after fish. But anyways, moving on for substrate in this tank, we just have some standard play sand. This is the stuff that you use to fill your sandboxes at, and you can buy it like at hardware stores, so Home Depot, Lowe's, that type of stuff. I don't really like the look of it though because it's really gray and gravelly. But actually I'm thinking of redoing this whole entire tank because I don't really like the look of it. You can see my only decorations in here are these rocks that I got from a gravel yard. I think they're granite um, and I got them for $2.50 for a five gallon bucket at the gravel yard. But I don't really like the look at them because they're just covered in algae, which is really sad. And so I'm thinking of redoing this tank over the spring. So I'm looking for ideas. If you guys have any suggestions on how I should redo this tank, what kind of plants, that type of thing, then leave it in the comments below. But we've just got some rocks in here. And then for equipment, we of course have our heater. This is a 125 watt Eheim heater. It works really well. I've got a heater guard on it just in case so that the turtle, if he knocks it over, it won't break or shatter. And right now it's keeping the temperature at about, if this would focus, and it keeps the temperature at about, you can see, 78 degrees. I like to keep it a little warmer for diamondback turbines because this is not a brackish water tank, for those of you who don't know. Um, diamondback turbines are naturally brackish and are sometimes kept brackish in captivity. But this guy was hatched and raised in fresh water, so he does fine in fresh water. But I found that when the temperature was lower, he started having some skin issues. But when I bumped the temperature up, he started doing just fine. So that's why the water is about at 78 degrees. And then up here, we have filtration, which keeps the water quality really up high. We have an AquaClear 70. I really love this filter. It's one of the best out there. And for media, you can see we have some sponges in here. This top sponge is actually for a sponge filter that I'm seeding, which is for an upcoming project. But under that, we also have some ceramic rings as well as a couple other filter sponges. I don't use carbon in my filters because I don't think it's really necessary. But that's for the filter. And then, of course, we have the all-important basking area, arguably one of the most important things in a turtle tank. So he has this little ramp where he can climb up and his basking lights. So for basking lights, I have a Reptisun 5.0 UVB compact light in just a regular heat dome. And then we have an incandescent, I want to say 75 watt halogen type A bulb that I just got from the hardware store. And so I have to replace the UVB light every six months. And then whenever the heat bulb burns out, I get a new one. 
And you can see I actually put some ceramic tile in here because those hold the heat better than the plastic. And for those of you who were asking me about this basking area possibly melting, it shouldn't be melting because the basking area hardly ever gets above like 95 degrees, so you don't have to worry about the plastic melting. And it is secured into the wall, it's just screwed in there. You can see we've got some L brackets supporting it, and then it's just sitting on the rim of the tank. There's a ramp for him to get in, which goes all the way into the water. And so there's that. And then finally we have our lid here. Actually, not finally, because I still have to talk about the light. But for lid, we just have a DIY hardware cloth mesh lid, which I made when I first decided I was going to get a turtle so that he wouldn't escape. But the funny thing with this lid is it doesn't actually escape proof because this smarty, we now call him Hoku Udini, he's really smart, and he figured out a way to escape this twice after escape proofing it both times, or so I thought escape proofing it. So he would actually used to climb up this ramp and then he would squeeze through right here, which is why I usually actually have one of these tiles blocking it like this. But I actually took those off because I didn't like the look of them. He hasn't escaped, but I'm thinking of actually redoing another lid for this that's made out of acrylic. So it'll be more escape proof. And also because this lid allows a lot of evaporation. So I'm constantly topping off water in this tank, which is kind of annoying. You can also see he's trying to bite my finger, but I'm thinking of actually redoing this lid and actually, as a whole, just redoing this tank because, I don't know, it just, it's so empty and it's so plain and I want it to look nice and I want it to be cool and all sorts of things for this little guy to explore. But that is basically the overview of the tank. Oh wait, and I almost forgot because this light is hidden. So this is called a Marine Land hidden LED. It's 24 inches across. I don't really like it, but I do at the same time because it um, clips onto the edge of the tank rim. I'm not sure if you can see that with the mesh, but it clips onto the edge of the tank and then it shines into the tank. And it's good because I don't have to have it up here, but it's also not very strong. And it's just very good at growing algae. So there's that, but overall it looks pretty good, I guess. But that is pretty much all of Hoku's tank. So that is the tour of Hoku's tank. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Let me know if you have any ideas or improvements um, because I really am looking at redoing this tank and possibly even upgrading him. Shh, don't tell my parents that, but I'm thinking of upgrading him. Don't forget to enter my Instagram giveaway because we hit 2,000 followers over there. The Instagram handle is just at the turtle girl and I'm giving away a tote bag and a $10 Amazon gift card, so that's pretty sweet. And this gift, that giveaway actually ends today, which is the day I'm uploading this. So definitely check that out, um, and I will be doing a live stream later today, so you guys can come hang out with me there. And I will see you guys next Friday, and have a totally awesome day. And there's Rocky, being his crazy self. Rocky, come here. Hi, Baba. Say bye, say bye to the people. Say bye, oh my goodness. Say bye bye. Hey. Oh, he doesn't care. Okay, well, we'll see you guys later. Bye.